guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Brooke, and for those who don't know already, um, and I wanted to have a good sit down conversation with you guys about my new series, Crazy About Criminals. So my new series is obviously going live, um, very soon. Obviously now because you guys are watching this, um, and this is episode one, and this is about the breed. So I thought I'd start this. Also, I I thought I would start my series off with about the breed. Because I think that's just a really great way to get the ball moving um, in this journey. So, about the breed, let's start. Well, Kaimanawas are the wild horse of New Zealand. Um, they're in, they live in the Kaimanawa Ranges, which is off the Desert Road in the North Island um, National Park area. Um, sorry, just stuffy nose. Yeah, honestly, Kaimanawas are a really great breed. They're a because they're so sure-footed, they're sturdy, stable, they're little, only ranging from 13 hands to like 15 one, 15 two hands at max. Um, their most common colour would be chestnut and bays. They don't usually... chestnut and bays their main colour. You get the odd black, the odd pure black, and the odd grey. Um, lots of photos, if you google photos, you will see lots of them are grey. But most, but they're actually not that common. And only like seven percent of horses, uh, of the Kamado horses, are actually grey. So, um, yeah, I thought this series would be a great way to raise awareness for the breed, as this year's muster, which will be. And if you don't know what a muster is, you can either Google it or you can stick around and watch my episode two, which is about the muster and how that process works. So, with the Kamado who's on board is KHHT, which stands for Kamado Heritage Horses. They are an amazing team. They organise everything. They are the founders. They are the starter. They work alongside, like, um, they work alongside Kelly and Amanda Wilson, um, to help raise awareness about the breed. And another really great um, organisation is Kamanua Legacy Foundation (KLF). They have some amazing people on their team. They um, raise awareness. They they organise the challenge side of things, which is. Which is going to be in another video, so I need to stop getting ahead of myself. So yeah, about the breed, they're sure-footed little ponies. Um, they adjust to domestication really well. They are purely wild horses, um, so they have never like ever been touched before. Um, yeah, so they haven't seen fences. They haven't been left alone. They've never like been handled at all. And it's funny because they're not like a pure breed. If that makes sense. Um, they classified as one but they're actually come from Welsh, Arab, Clyde. Sometimes you get the odd distinguished thoroughbred type. Um, because people would just dump their like domesticated horses or stallions or mares or whatnot of breeds and they release them into that area. And that's how the Commonwealth breed has started. That doesn't happen often anymore, but that's how it started. And in total there's about three hundred horses. Three hundred to four hundred horses in the world at this very moment. But this year they well, on average they usually bring in hundred and fifty horses. Um but this year they bring in the China bring an estimated two hundred and fifty horses as there was no muster last year. So they're trying to make up for that time. So the reason that everyone is so flustered and why we've got so much extra organization going into this is because they're bringing out like another hundred horses, which means it needs to be another hundred times. And unfortunately, a lot. Unfortunately, the real the reality of life is that if they don't get homes, then they can't be like if they don't the horses that don't have homes get sent to slaughter. Which personally, I think taking horses out of the wild in general is not what we should be doing. Like, I don't think you should take a horse from its home, its family, put it into something, into places that no one it knows, nothing has ever seen before, and start pressuring it and getting mad at it. And, trying to teach it all these new things and change its completely and completely change its lifestyle. I personally don't agree with that. But the the alternative to that is that they all just go to slaughter because if you don't bring them in, they'll get overpopulated. The land will get overpopulated, they'll start eating native trees, um, they'll die of starvation and diseases and it will just all turn and then they won't be any good for rehoming anyway. So that's why we try to keep the numbers low. Um their main, um, so I put, yeah, so, 
You're making the best of a bad situation, if that makes sense. Making the best of a bad situation. So, because, yeah, we're making the best of a bad, so bad situation instead of bringing the horses, take them from their wild and domestication. But they're having a second chance at life with new horse friends, getting rid and competing adventures, or just time out in pastures with another herd dynamic life. That is better than the being sent to slaughter and their life's ending. It's only foals. So, that is better than, like, what the alternative to that is. So, whether we like it or not, that is better. I know a lot of people don't agree with it, and personally, I don't. But that is definitely better, giving them a second chance at life where they could really, th where they could really thrive. Thrive is a lot better than sending them off to slaughter. So that is a little bit about the Kaimanawa horses. Um, yeah, keep following my series for more. But yeah, thanks so much for watching. I hope you feel a bit more informed. Please keep raising awareness about the breed. Um, and I will see you all in episode two. I hope you liked the video. Stay tuned for a lot more Brooklyn underscore equestrian.